Hey everyone, Jay here from App Music Tutorials. I have to say it's great to be back in action after a month long hiatus. I'd like to thank you for joining me, whether you're a current subscriber or just here checking things out for the very first time. In previous videos, we've spent quite a bit of time learning about the Loop Builder view. And why not? It's an extremely cool and fun way to make music. But there are a lot of musicians who might want to use Zen Beats uh, who primarily are used to kind of the conventional timeline view methodology of recording music. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're also going to talk about, I believe, the title of this video, which is the eight bar restriction the Zen Beats drum sequencer has in place and how it can really kind of mess you up if you're trying to create genres of music that really don't necessitate the use of loops. So we're going to talk about the workaround that Roland provided me. We're going to talk about some other workarounds or some other things I figured out along the way that I think I'll share with you. And so let's get started. So here I am in Zen Beats and I'm going to create a new song. Now, I know I've said this in previous videos, but um, creating a new song, if you click on the new song option, it's going to take you into an empty shell of a song. And this is a great way to learn Zen Beats from the ground up. This is how I learned Zen Beats. I learned by building track by track by track, but I wasn't very creative during that time. When you get lost in the details of having to set things up, sometimes you lose your spark, and that's not a good thing. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to go back to my home page, and the option I'll choose here is Open Song. And I know I've said this before, but I think that uh, starting off your song is using a track template is the way to go. And you access your track templates through this new song option on the upper left. So here there are a lot of different starter templates to get you up and running and recording your ideas quickly. I myself am going to choose the Rock Studio. If you want to choose a different option, feel free. But I'll double tap or double click that. And now I'm in the Loop Builder view. And I'm going to actually switch my view now to the Timeline view because that's what we're going to primarily focus on during this lesson. And so here we go. And now I don't just have a drum track. I have bass. I have some keys. I have a sampler. I've got uh, a reverb send that supplies reverb to various tracks in my project. Uh, effects, things already set up that I don't have to worry about or consume valuable time taking care of when I'm in creative mode. So right away I can come out here and start to create music immediately. In Timeline View, you're going to notice that there is a little placeholder here. And it happens to be four measures long. And it's segmented into um, one measure intervals. So you might be wondering, well, well, what does that mean? It means I can't play a drum beat from start to finish using the Zen Beats drum sequencer because everything on this particular track is loop based which is great for EDM producers and beat producers and things of that nature. I use all kinds of loops building various tracks depending on the genre of music I'm producing. But for some genres like rock and roll, heavy metal, blues, we have more nuances in the drumming and we have unique fills and other articulations that occur maybe only once throughout the entire drum progression. And you don't get that with loops. As you know, loops repeat. That's the whole basis of loops. So, you know, how do we circumvent? How do we get around this eight measure limitation? Let's see what happens when I just start playing a beat. By the way, something that I've recently noticed is that you do not have to arm a track to get it to record, which is kind of startling. You have to really pay attention. It'll record on the track that you actually select. So please, please pay attention so that you don't inadvertently record over something that you've already got out there. Uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and just start to record here. So if you noticed what happened right away, all I was able to do is tap in one measure's worth of beats and it just created a loop right from that one measure and copied it down four times, basically. That's the standard behavior of this track. Now, the reason that these segments are one bar long is because of the default I have set up here in my grid area. 
And so here there is a new pattern size and typically it is set to one bar. And typically that's great for EDM producers. I mean, you can always change the number of bars at the actual clip level, which is what we're gonna do also. But this is where that starts. This is where the default is set for the number of bars your loops will be. Now I'm gonna click away and you can also change it on a per loop basis by going into the loop itself. I'm gonna double tap or double click here. And there's a little icon on the upper left right next to where you select your drum kits, this little four square button. And here's where we can actually set the pattern size for this pattern. So I'm gonna bump that up all the way to eight bars. And again, eight bars is our limit. Click away and I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna show you that this is truly now an eight bar loop. Okay, now this gives me more leeway. Okay, so because when I make a change in a loop, eventually down the pipe, that same change will appear. So as an example, let's say I want to, and I'm just double clicking to get into the sequencer. Let's say in this first pattern, I want there to be a series of cymbal hits that only appear in that very first pattern in the beginning of the song. Well, I've given myself a lot of space here. I've given myself a whole eight measures to play around with. But that's it. Once I go beyond the eight measure limit, the eight bar limit, see how it recycles? It repeats itself again because it is a loop. Now, a way around that I figured out on my own without contacting Roland around this is, okay, um, there's gotta be a way to separate the loops so that they're handled independently. And so if you long press or right click on the clip, uh, you'll see there's an option that says break up loops. And when you select it, then it breaks up the loops. They're no longer tied together. So if I make a change to one loop here, to one of these patterns, it won't affect the other. There's still loops. I can still drag them out, no doubt. But I can, let's say, take out the four hits here that are at the beginning and that will not impact the original loop. The four hits are still there. So this is one way, but I still thought it was really, really a pain, okay, to go through this process just to get a drum beat out here to produce a rock song. But I did contact Roland, as I said, they were really kind. They right away got me the information about how I can make this work out. Uh, and they certainly acknowledge that there is that eight measure limitation because of that first track, the drum track, being a sequencer track. So here's how this works. Let me go ahead and first delete my loops here. And we're gonna have to add a track. So I'll click add track. It's gonna be an instrument track, but I'm not gonna choose an instrument. I'm just gonna go over to the panel on the right and close down the instrument picker. And let me go ahead and back this up to zero on the timeline. And also one thing to be aware of is when you do record, you want to make sure that this loop option is turned off. Otherwise, you might get to the end of that segment and it'll all of a sudden start over again and you might record over what you just recorded. So I'm going to turn off the loop option here. Okay. So we do have that additional track. I'm gonna move that up underneath the drum so we can see the relationship as things progress here. And as I tap my MIDI keyboard, you can see that there's input going into track two. But there's no sound because we didn't select any instruments, right? So we're gonna use this as the driver. We're gonna want the notes played in this track to be sent through the drum module to produce our sounds. And that's going to be our way around the eight measure limitation. Now, none of these other tracks have that limitation. I can play through my bass, my keys, any of these tracks all the way through from start to finish without fear of some looping occurring. The only track that this limitation applies to is the drum track. So, okay, we've got our other track here. It's responsive. There's input. But now how do we actually make that trigger the drum sounds in the track above it? How we do that is we have to do some MIDI switches. It's very simple. Uh, all we have to do is with that track selected, and by the way, let me just have, uh, I'm just gonna change the name of this track. I'm gonna double click there, double tap. And I'm gonna call this uh, Drum Trigger. Oh, 
all drum triggers so we know exactly what's happening here. And now I need to route through MIDI the notes played on this track to the drums. I have to output the notes from this track to the drums so that they produce a sound through the drum module. To do that, I'm going to select the MIDI option in the channel strip adjacent to the drum trigger track. Now, if this happens to be missing for you, it means you've got the panel collapsed. So go down to the very bottom left and click on the little icon there, little arrow, and you can see it kind of expands and contracts. Just pop that out. And now let's go into the MIDI setup area, choose Advanced MIDI. And all we really need to pay attention to for this demonstration for this routing is the output track. So currently the output track is the drum trigger. But since we don't have any sounds, we want to send the output from this channel, this track, to the drums. Now we don't click away to close the panel, as we often do in other areas. We have to really truthfully click OK, otherwise this won't work. Now as I press my uh, drum, or I should say, now as I tap my MIDI keyboard, I can see that there is input going into the drum trigger but nothing going to the drums. But that will happen because somewhere along my keyboard, I'm going to run into the actual where the drum pattern begins with the sequencer. So let me go down a couple. There we go. So now you can see I've actually got levels for both. I can see my input. I can see that outputting into the drum sequencer, see the levels for that. So that's nice. We've got now this independent track that does not have the 8-beat limitation, yet we're still able to use the sounds of the inbuilt Zen Beats sequencer. So let me play back some stuff. Let me record, I should say, some stuff here just to show you how this works. So I'm just going to start the record. And all I wanted to do was play a segment long enough so you could see that we're well beyond the 8-bar limitation, and this is not a loop. It's just empty space beyond that last note, and that's what we want. And as a producer of this type of music where I can bypass the looping functions makes this a viable alternative DAW digital audio workstation for really anyone who wants to get into this. It's not limited to EDM music. So um, that's a great thing because it expands, it opens up a whole new universe of opportunity for those types of musicians who are typically drawn to the timeline, linear, uh, multi-tracking environment. And this is the way that they can multi-track their drum instruments without fear of them looping. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with here is, okay, what if I get through producing my drum track in this manner, Jay, and I don't like the drum sound? Well, Something that's a little fluky here is, you know, generally speaking, to get into the drum sequencer, we only have to go up to the actual track icon and double click. But that doesn't work right now um, here. And the reason it doesn't work is because if you recall, we had that little placeholder out here. Um, that placeholder has to exist in order to open up the sequencer in timeline view. I could go over, just to show you, I can go over to the actual sequencer, loop builder view, and double click on the track icon and there's my stuff. But in order to make this work in timeline view, I have to first have a placeholder out here. Now doing that is as easy as double clicking. You've got the placeholder. You can either double click the placeholder or at this point you can truthfully double click the track icon. Either way, it'll bring you into the sequencer. And here I can play back my beat and then start to sample other options. Just kind of flip through different sounds, different kits. I'm going to pick this drum room rock demo kit. that's how you can switch over the kits. Remember, the key here is if you've gotten rid of that placeholder, you have to put a placeholder here 
and then you can open up the sequencer and tweak the sounds as needed. All right, so that's going to wrap things up for now. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them in the comments area. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more app music tutorial videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and take care until next time.